Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story. The head coach with me, Daniel. We're back today for a massive game for this series. The club we were sacked from earlier this year, Charlton Athletic, against our current new club, Salford City. Both clubs doing terribly. This one we expected. But look what's happened to little Charlton. Since we were sacked, they've crawled down the league. They're now in 19th place under Chris Hewton. And we'd love to see them get back involved in the relegation battle just to prove how wrong they were to sack us. Don't forget, we finished in the play playoffs for them last year we went on a brilliant run to the championship playoff semi-final narrowly lost out to Watford we did really well but we just weren't clinical enough in the end and now we've been sacked after a poor start to the season and we end up with a tiny side in Salford City as well as that we've got loads of transfer news to talk about and we'll get through that in a minute quite a few results to go through as well as you can see things not going too great still seven points from safety we have got a couple of wins but we have managed to lose a lot of games too and Wigan and Cardiff the only clubs we can realistically catch and maybe Charlton if we get a win against them today. To be honest, I don't really care if we go down. We've got the lowest budget in the league. We were expected to get relegated. But if we win this game, I will be very happy. It's all I'm asking for out of this season. We just need to find a little bit of form quite quickly. But firstly, before we go and look at our transfer news and even see what Charlton have been doing as well, a massive thank you to everyone who continues to follow the series. I hope you're enjoying our stint with Salford so far. Of course, it's a testing one coming in as relegation favourites. Next year will really be the test for this series. I'd love to get a surprise survival moment but I don't think that's going to happen we're almost certainly down and this one could put the nail in the coffin but if you are looking forward to this episode the big rivalry for the first club that we were sacked from in this channel please do put a thumbs up on the video if you're new to the channel subscribe for daily fm20 content from both of my long-term stories including this one and if you haven't already check out our match day vlogs as well I've got part of a football podcast that does that and there's a link to that series in the eye above too and I hope you enjoy it as much as we do making it but let's go and have a look at Charlton Athletic see what's going on there to start with we obviously produced their best season of the series so far but since then they've sacked us they've got a few players coming in as well so let's see what their January window was like well some big signings it shows you just the difference between the two sides Gregova sold on they've signed a player from Leon for seven million pound up front a young striker he's absolutely fantastic 19 years of age arguably a wonder kid Chris Cadden a 28 year old Scottish international from the MLS decent squad player which they're paying three million for and then Victor Klassen for a million, the experienced pro. He's going to Charlton via Crystal Palace. But that's for Charlton. We expected a few bits of business there. They're obviously working in a different league to us. If we go and have a look at the championship quickly, as well as being seven points off safety, I just wanted to show you some of the stats there. A few of you had asked, what are the stats like in terms of wage output? So if I show you the salary, we are miles below at the bottom of the league. Preston, of course, not far above. They're the side of a bottom at the moment. But for us, we're technically overachieving. The net transfer spend, it's all for up in seventh place because they did spend a little bit in the summer but mainly because they haven't got players they can sell on they haven't got that ability to bring in big transfer fees and to be honest our director of football has done a bit in January he's definitely improved the side but he's putting us in financial jeopardy again and even with the lowest wage bill in the league our finance is still struggling to compete so let's go and have a look at the transfers there's one that's pre-agreed for the summer Sid Nelson a 29 year old from Aberdeen he's a centre half that will be coming in I presume when the loan expires for the one that he's bought in in January and he looks a very good solid player. He'll certainly do a job for us in League One if we end up there. He's currently a Tranmere in real life. I've seen him live a couple of times this season. In fact, he features in one of the matchday vlogs in that podcast series. But let's go and have a look at the ones that came in and out in January. Four out on loan. Three of them first teamers. Mampala made an impact in the last episode. Tom Flanagan, an experienced centre half too. Carl Frost was an under 23, but he was a good player. And Sam Taylor was just signed beforehand. So let's go and have a look at the six players coming in and introduce you to some of the new stars at the club. So first is that man Sam Taylor in for 14,000 from Telford in the National League has since gone on loan to Wrexham as well. Two and a half star ability, good young right winger, not quite good enough for this level. Maybe an appearance in League One next year if we're down there. He's playing in League Two for Wrexham at present and I think he's going to be a decent pro too. So we've got high hopes for him moving forward. And second on the list we start the first teamers. Ben Close coming in from Pompey where he's been for absolutely years. 12 seasons there, 189 appearances. Now 28 years of age, a good solid 
central midfielder. And he's playing in the middle for us at the moment. But he's not quite able to make a difference at this level. And then the third one was another one in that sort of position. This time a more attacking one from Southampton. And our first of two loans in the window. Lucas Smith, the man coming in. A right winger and striker. Not the best finisher in the world. But electric quick. Got really professional personality. Loves to run off the ball. Loves to work hard. Got a really good rate in two assists and two goals. And to be honest, he's been a shining light in this team so far. So we're delighted to have him here at Four Star Ability. He's making an impact on his loan from Southampton. A club that are obviously famous for producing good youngsters. And this one hasn't yet moved on to Liverpool. Then three more to go. The first is the second lone player at the window. Paul Beresford, a centre-half from Chelsea. He's our first choice backup. Replaces Flanagan, who left the club, of course. He was never getting a game for us, though. He's a left-footed centre-half. Fairly professional. Good potential long-term as well. But he's not quite got the attributes at the moment. And as a result, he sits on the bench most weeks. Then the last two are deadline day panics, as well as those two loanies. Ryan Jack, an experienced player. Very familiar to Rangers fans, of course, in real life. He's played for Bristol City in between here. Now third to a Scottish international, a really good central midfielder, just starting to decline physically at 32, with three and a half star ability, he can still very much do a job for us. And then finally last but not least, Burley Labala, I think that is, 135 grand from Crawley, comes in as a left winger, a really good young player, only 27 years of age, just coming into his peak, and he's solid across the board, again a good one for League One, we should be able to compete at the top next year if we do end up going down. So he'll compete with Edwards for that left wing position and we'll let them do that for the rest of the year. But a decent January window, we've improved the squad and the permanent one should make a big impact in League One. So it's almost like the board are preparing for it. The director of football seems to be acclimatising to that level. But we are going to have to make a big sale at some point and I fear as to which one it will be. Because there's a few players worth a little bit of money and some of them are going to have to move on. The ones that we want to try and sell aren't going. So there's some on the transfer list, have been since we got here. The likes of Falivi, Tal. Burns is there as well. Ogilvy's getting really unhappy at the moment. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with those ones. The one other bit of good news is the end of a goal drought. And I'll show you that as we go through the recent games. You're of course with me for the Wolves and Leeds matches. Possibly the two hardest ones of the season. And January finished in the same way it started to be honest. A defeat away at Nottingham Forest. 2-0 there. And then a difficult 3-2 defeat away at QPR. Josh Thomas with the goals late in each half. Just a consolation to be honest. We were definitely going to lose from start to finish. But it was nice to see us having a goal threat again but it all started well in February at home to Reading we managed to get a 3-1 win and Zach Brown ended his goal drought with a brilliant finish in the 92nd minute his first goal for the club in his 15th appearance hasn't scored any more yet since mind you but a good player nonetheless and he did get a goal and we did get a little bit of hope there it was the day after we had four new signings made a debut all of them had a big impact on the game but since then of course it has dwindled slightly and immediately we were shattered with a 5-0 defeat Sheffield Wednesday running riot against us that we did win at home to Wigan the following game they're of course the side sitting in 21st at the moment Lucas Smith getting his second in two home games before two defeats against top sides in the last two so it was Dobson who got the winner for Sheffield United Burnley beat us 2 0 as well with Chris Wood scoring and we go into this Charlton game today in a really difficult position with our star winger Dave Kyle missing out suspended too so let's go and get into that game just the one today the dynamics are looking absolutely awful we've got a youth intake to prepare for as well of course we know that's not going to be great so there's lots of things that are going badly at the moment. We've just got to try and put on the great escape. It's almost a sellout and we're actually favourites. How's that happened? Charlton have got a plethora of talent. Players largely on 40 or 50 grand a week. They're in poor form. Just three points in the last five. We've got six points but of course three defeats rather than two. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out. And Chris Hewton I'm sure we'll get it right there eventually. Is there anyone else we want to bring into the squad today? There's a couple just struggling for fitness slightly. So Williams will replace Clark. Is there anything we can do in there? Williams will go in as a box-to-box -box midfielder, I think. Maybe a ball winner, but he's not really worked there so often. Keeps getting bookings, which is doing my head in. So for now, we're just going to take him out. Teller's in on the right wing because of the suspension. Ben Close will still be on the bench with his quality. And aside from that, it's the same 11 and 18. We're not going to make too many changes at this stage. So in goal, we've got Horgard, Devlin and Field are the fullbacks with Astley and Sykes in the middle. Field playing because of the strop to Ogilvy at left back. And of course, in the middle, Astley 
just about better than Beresford at present. But he's had injury troubles as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if we make a change there. Beresford, of course, at left centre half. Might fit him better in that sort of position. In fact, you know what? Astley's been in pretty poor form, if I remember. Let's go and look at his last match rating. 6.6. .6. Let's make the swap now, shall we? It can only go wrong. It's against Charlton Athletic. The game that I most want to win. Why would you not make changes? Jack and Williams in the middle. Teller and Edwards over on the wings. Labala back on the bench. He's come back from injury in the last couple of matches. And then Chaplin in the false nine supporting Lucas Smith. He's been scoring goals since he joined the club. So in we go. We've got the likes of Thomas on the bench. Kyle, John, Zach Brown. Plenty of attacking game changers. But let's just go and see if we can get a positive result in the game I'm most desperate to win against the club who sacked us. 4-2-3-1 for Charlton and many, many familiar faces, of course. In fact, I think the left winger Klassen is the only one that wasn't there at the start of the year. Still, all of them are players, really. James Justin back down to the bench. Wardley's coming up right back. He's a left footer. Perhaps we could exploit that. Or have they done that deliberately to deal with our inverted winger? They've got Delgado in the number 10, Marin out wide. Selnays and Baptiste, two quality players. Arezo, a superstar up front. I wonder if he started scoring for them. Let's have a look. 11 goals. He started banging them in. You've got to give them that. So that's the one thing they have managed to do but he's on 56 grand a week which is basically more than our entire squad so our 11 today barely matches that and that's why it's so hard for us to compete here but let's go and get into it we're going to encourage the lads we're in poor form but let's do our best and into the first half against Charlton we go fingers crossed of all the games this is the one we can win Pacheco with a goal kick from Charlton. We did have sort of half a highlight. It's one of those ones where it came back late. We were heading over from a corner. But a good start until Teller gives it away there. Third choice right wingers having to come in today. Marin skins the team into the box. Unopposed forces are saved from Hallgaard. And all of that from a bit of sloppiness in possession. That doesn't bode well with just 10 on the clock. We can't afford to give away chances like that. We know the quality Charlton have got. It's largely the side that finished in the top six last year. Largely the side that were doing brilliantly under us. And Baptiste heads the corner well over the bar and with 15 gone we're still hanging on for nil nil Left hand side is a throw in for Tom Field. He finds Chaplin who's holding it up well. Back to Edwards. Ryan Jack, the experienced midfielder there. All the way back to centre half. It's Beresford, the new boy. Lovely switch of play. Teller with an overlap. Can he find him? Out to Nicky Devlin. Chance to cross. Into Smith who misses it. A penalty's given though, so it must have been a tug. Who's the best penalty taker? It's Connor Chaplin. And we've got a chance to make the dream happen here. Oh, I'd love to win this game. I'm going to turn into Kevin Keegan at this rate. The shadows are there. Can he put it in? Chaplin steps up into the corner Pacheco got there couldn't get a strong enough hand to it and a ninth for the season for Connor Chaplin and we lead with a quarter of the game gone against former side Charlton Athletic Free kick for Chaplin just a minute later into the box. Marin heads down rather than away. Edwards on the edge of the box to cross. Falls out to Chaplin. He beats two players. Finds Edwards in the box. Crosses towards Smith and he's cleared away. Robson Brown hacks it clear to Arezo. And he's got four or five to beat here. Holds it up well. Goes back to Baptiste. It's almost like I'm commentating on two of my sides here. Classen the only exception as he switches the play. Marin cutting in. There's so much quality. You've got to be careful but the cross is blocked. And Williams clears long downfield. Only to Brown on halfway though. Just just a temporary halt to the attack and it's back out to the left to Klassen. A chance to cross into Arezo. Beresford with a good header. But Baptiste again, wide again. Into the box. It's Arezo one on one. What a save from Jacob Horgard. That was incredible goalkeeping. Threw himself at it. It just hit him in the chest. It's behind for a corner which Selnays will take. Heads to the front post and Selnays loses out. And it's Teller who's hacked away on the rebound. Has to get his yellow card out there. Why is he not but Marin for a cynical challenge? But with half an hour gone we lead 1-0. And that's the most important thing at this stage of the match. Half time then. Nice calm into the half. And we do lead 1-0 via that penalty. Oh, I'd love to win this. Please let me win this game. Richie Barker says encourage the lads. We're going to go and do just that. Let's see how we're going to get in on. That's probably the most important one. I think they're losing by the looks of it. The results won't let us go all the way down. So unless they're away from home, we won't see. We can't because of that little glitch down there. Hang on. We've got it up now. Swansea gone 2-0 up against Wigan now. With an hour gone, the gap's down to four points. Charlton back within touching distance. Nine clear. And we're with 11 to go, we'd have a half chance here. That'd be a brilliant job for us considering where we started. We're going to go and make our first change. On the left wing, Edwards nervous, not having the best game. On will come Labala for him out there. Same role, same duty, nothing to change there. Let's just go and get back into it. And then as we get into the last 10, we'll make a couple more. Just try and see out the game pretty comfortably. Time for another one then. Just seven minutes to go. Teller's going to be replaced by Kyle John on the right. I'm just trying to eat out the minutes here. Trying to get players closed down. Trying to make things as easy as possible. 
possible. With two to go, we're going to go to our time-wasting tactics. No need to go quite as direct. Tempo lower, just try and keep the ball slowly. Really wind them up with the way we do it. And we'll try and get as defensive as we possibly can. Just one minute plus stoppage time. Charlton on the attack. Please don't let it happen like this. Miranda crosses. Arezo loses out. Brilliant header from Beresford again. He's had a really good game so far, but it's in the box again. Baptiste 25 yards out. Wardley shoots. Not like that. Into the corner. It's an absolute screamer. And it's going to cost us the win. It's a brilliant performance and it's gone wrong. And in the last minute, we've been cost of the feet. Lucas Smith's in nervous all game. We're going to bring on Zach Brown up front for him. And we've got one minute plus stoppage time to regain the lead. But in truth, that's probably just about it. Wardley scoring a screamer the left back. He's covering on the right for Charlton at the minute. And I'm not quite sure how he keeps scoring them. As his ratings are absolutely woeful technically. But he scored one for us at the start of the year. I remember him scoring a screamer in the cup. And now Ryan Jack to Sykes again. Can we nick it on the break? We can't. Now Charlton coming forward. It'd be crucially bad if we lost it. Perkins runs the length. He finds Cadden. The other sub shot's blocked. Field gets there. The bar are all clear away. What are you doing? Not across your own goal. That's Park football mistakes that. John goes long. Clark loses out. He wins in the air against Zach Brown. And it's Charlton all over us at the moment. The wind's out of our sails. And I'm wondering if we'll hold on here. Miranda beats one. He's into the box. Shoots just wide at the post. And with four minutes of stoppage time to go, this is going to be devastating. 94th minute. Charlton with a corner. Please not like this. Stevens heads down. Perkins is there. I'd be devastated if it was another screamer. But hang on a minute. The shot's been blocked. Here goes Labala on the break. He's one on one on the right wing here. If he can beat the man, we're in good position. Beats one. Cuss inside. Two or three up in support. Goes for the shot. What an effort that was. Just wide at a post and Charlton survive. What a finish to the game that would have been. But as it stands, we drop back closer to relegation. Six points the distance because of the draw. And this was one of the games we could have realistically won. Now hang on a minute. John's down the right. Chance to cross into the box. Headed away by Wardley, the hero for Charlton. Perkins brings away and the whistle goes. And a fantastic, fascinating game ends one all. We were so close to a brilliant result against Charlton. It would have been the perfect icing on the cake for us. But Ian Wardley with an absolute screamer. And that's what's cost us the game in the end. So Wigan did lose. We remain six points behind them with 11 games left in the championship. I feel like we had to win that one. Look at Wardley's stats. Four for finishing, four for long shots. He scored two in the Carabao Cup under our management. That's his first goal since. It's an absolute rocket into the corner. I've no idea how he keeps producing them. But thank you, Football Manager, for screwing us over again. And even him on loan from City on 12 and a half grand a week. That's more than two or three of our players combined. So let's have a look at the inbox, see what was said by the media. Spoils are shared, but let's be honest, we deserve to win that game. Beresford made his debut. He was very good defensively. That's the most positive thing to come out of today's game, I think. We'll deal with the press conference off camera. We'll start to get into that running. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something special. I don't know if we will, though. It seems a little bit late for now. So if it is going to be relegation, we'll just come back for the last game of the season and review it. If it does look like we might have a chance, we'll probably pop back halfway in between. Maybe the two home games in the middle there. Hull and Millwall at the end and start of the month. One either side of the international break or might include the loot and one in April too. They were of course right up there at the start of the season. They've now dropped down to mid-table. They're pretty much safe there on 48 points. It's a low relegation threshold this year and it does look like it's three from four. Cardiff managing to pick up points again and if we've won that game it would have been a completely different picture. But if you did enjoy this episode and that entertaining game against our former club Charlton, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Of course based on the squads and the finances available we've done a remarkable job to get a result there and to be honest I'm a little bit disappointed in Charlton. They sacked us and they're crawling down the league we could have been there and we probably would have turned it around and by now we could have been chasing the championship playoffs but at Salford we are desperately fighting the great escape it doesn't look like it's going to be forthcoming but either way we're preparing well for league one we're finding a tactic we can play in and I'm hoping we'll be able to dominate next season and get straight back up to this level better prepared let me know in the comments what I should do tactically. I've been thinking about playing three in the middle, particularly now we've got Williams and Close joining as well. Williams back from his suspensions, Close in the middle. Ryan Jack, of course, there as well. Two of them able to play as a holding player. So maybe a 4-3-3 and one up front. We've got two or three really good strikers as well. I really don't know the way to approach it at the moment. We seem to be doing okay in February. We've actually done all right. And if we'd averaged seven points a month full season, of course, we would have been fighting for survival easily. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for daily episodes. FM20 content from my two long-term stories. This one will be back in two days' time on Saturday. Of course, a big one as we try and survive in the championship. And in the meantime, we're back with Dorking Wanderers. Things
Things going very well there at the moment. Bit of an interesting January. We're having a little slightly different season to normal. Cup runs, a bit of a mediocre league campaign. Lots of different transfer strategies too. So make sure you come and check that one out as well. It's a perfect time to come and pick up the story. Finally, I'm part of a podcast that does match day vlogs and interviews. And you can see the link to the match day vlogs playlist in the eye above. A massive thank you for your support with the new series is on the channel as well. We've had a You Are The Ref series start. A light-hearted debate which is quite interactive. So come and join along for that one too. We've had a few more serious discussions talking about injuries and the impact on us too. For amateur football in particular, it's a subject that's often neglected. So I hope you come and listen to that and enjoy it as well. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series. I really do greatly appreciate it. It looks like we're doomed, but there's still a slight bit of hope. So please do join me for the next one in a couple of days' time, where hopefully we can start to pull off the great escape. Thank <laughs> you.